again, life is an illusion. We are all one. We all come from the same energy that created this amazing universe that we have. I say we're all spe uh, specks of the green pea, little specks of the green pea, because scientists finally came out a few years back and they said, we used to say all the energy at one time could fit on the tip of the needle. Now they said, no, it's the size of a green pea. So all the energy at one time could fit inside a green pea. And that's formless energy. That's uh, zero point energy. And then that energy went into space, diluted itself, and it became formed energy or tachyon energy, vibrating energy, which is nothing but that little speck of green pea with a bunch of empty space. To illustrate how much empty space there is, let me digress one more time. If you wanted to look at an atom uh, in an orange, you'd have to blow the orange up to the size of the, of, the, of the earth. And then the atoms inside this orange, that's the size of the earth, would be the size of cherries. That's how many atoms there are in an orange. Now if we look at the cherry, to look at the subatomic particles in there, we find that we could blow that cherry up to the size of several football fields, and then the protons, electrons, and neutrons would be little bitty pebbles here and there. All the rest is empty space. So the point I'm trying to get here is at one time, everything in our universe could fit in something the size of a green pea. Now it's not hard to think about something on top of the green pea communicating to something at the bottom of the green pea when it's only the size of green pea. Now you expand that out into space and it's, you know, the universe. How can something on one side of the universe still communicate? It can and it does because that's what the biophotons are. You see, when energy steps down a level, when formless energy becomes formed energy, it emits light. That's the biophotons. That's what's inside all of us. And you can take those plants that Bose was doing experiments on and cook those plants. Now, you think that plant's going to read your mind? Hell no! We destroyed the plant. If you're going to argue cooked food, any cooked food diet's better than a raw food diet, you're delusional. You could take a raw food vegan diet and put everybody on it and have all the deficiencies that we would have and at least would get the hell out of this friggin' hell that we're in now because we're eating cooked food. Because cooked food just get, destroys the nutrient that feeds one of our senses. This is a no-brainer. Take a carrot and pull it out of the ground. Take two of them. Take one and go cook it. Bring the carrots back. Cut the carrot tops off. Bury the carrot tops in the ground. What's going to happen? You know what's going to happen. One's going to grow, one's not. We destroyed something in that plant. What was it? Well, we know we destroyed the enzymes, and we know we destroyed the biophotons, both by 100%. Now, you might argue, saying, well, we don't need enzymes to digest food, but that's not the point. It's a dead plant. We destroyed it. And that's what we're doing to ourselves. We are what we eat. Why can't we extrapolate that? It's called denial, denial, denial. All you idiot cooked food apologists going, oh, cooked vegan is better than raw vegan. You're in denial.